If you are new to SAC, this tutorial will guide you through the main features you must know. In the end, you are ready to build your first dashboard. Let's start! The first time you open the menu bar, it can be quite overwhelming. But don't worry, you only have to click on Stories to build your first dashboard. When working with SAC, you will become familiar with the different types of stories. But the most important one is responsive. With a responsive story, your dashboard adapts automatically to different screen sizes. To create a chart, you can drag a chart from the left side panel. However, in order to create a chart, we first need a dataset or a model. So this is the first thing you have to remember in SAC. If you want to build a dashboard, you need a story and a dataset slash a model. The story is your front end with all the nice charts and tables and the dataset or the model is your back end. So let's close this window for a moment and click on this little cube symbol. I create this dataset from an Excel file with many rows and columns. While the file is uploading, just a short note on the difference between a dataset and a model. As I said, you need a story and a dataset slash a model to create your first dashboard. If you use files like Excel or CSV and you want to build an ad hoc analysis, then create a dataset. If you want to build a professional and governed dashboard, perhaps even with a live connection to a database, then create a model. Before you are going to create your first charts, you have to check whether your data is well prepared. I recommend to use the following five step method. In the first data preparation step, you have to check whether the columns are correctly assigned to measures and dimensions. Columns where you can calculate something are usually measures, for example, costs, quantities, but also latitudes and longitudes. Columns with elements that are not meant to calculate with are usually dimensions, for example, order IDs, countries, but also dates. Normally, SAC is quite good to automatically assign the columns to the right group. If you still find a mistake, then click on the three points and select change to a measure or change to a dimension. In the second step, you have to check your data types and formats. I will show you an example with the measure sales. Let's click on this little cube and then we are offered different options for our measure. I will go through the most important ones. First of all, you can define the aggregation type. Perhaps you know this function from pivot tables in Excel. The aggregation type is responsible for the type of calculation that will be applied when you aggregate the measure. So, for example, if sales are aggregated to the category TV, then all sales values will be summed up provided that sum was selected as an aggregation type. For a measure like sales, this makes absolutely sense. The second option allows you to define how many decimal places your measure needs. If you are not sure, you can adjust it later in the story mode directly in your charts. The third important option is the data type. In our case, we need a decimal. And the fourth relevant option is the statistical type. There are four different types. Nominal is for unordered values, for example, our city column. Then there is the ordinal type, which is for sortable values. The next type is continuous, which is for numerical, sortable and continuous values. And the last statistical type is textual. And you should use this one if you have, for example, user comments in your dataset. Ok, let's go back to the measure and dimension overview and have a look at the options when selecting a dimension like city. 
The data types look a little bit different. We have a few more options like date, time or string. And if we open the statistical types, it looks familiar to the ones from measures. In this data set, the data types and formats are completely fine. We come to the third step in our data preparation, the descriptions. Normally, you have some columns with an ID and some with a description. In my case, I have a customer ID and a customer name as a separate column. Of course, they belong together and therefore I select the ID column, go to description and select customer name. There's also a second dimension, the product ID, that has a description, namely the product name. That's it. Let's come to the fourth data preparation step, the hierarchies. To create one, click on this little hierarchy symbol and give it a name. I simply call it the product hierarchy. Then I select the dimensions from top to bottom in order to create the hierarchy, which is category, subcategory and product ID. Then click on OK and your first hierarchy is ready. Notice that four columns are selected since the product ID has additionally a description. And now we come to the fifth and last data preparation step, the geo coordinates. Click on this little map symbol and select coordinates. Go to enrich dimension and select the dimension you want to enrich with coordinates. In my case, it's the city. And in this case, SAC automatically detected the latitude and longitude. Click on OK and that's it. We have finished our data preparation process. Perfect. We exit the data preparation and start building our first charts. As a default, the responsive story always opens with a so-called lane where your charts get organized within. Let's click on this little chart symbol to create our first chart. As you can see, the right side panel opens and there are different chart types. As a default, the bar chart is selected. When I click on measure and select for example sales, then a first bar appears in the chart. If I then add a dimension, I get a typical bar chart. We can sort this chart, click on these three points in the right corner of the chart or make a right click on the chart to open the context menu and go to sort to sort a chart by measure from highest to lowest. And if you want to, you can resize the chart and make it a little bit larger. Just a short note from my side, if you are interested in learning more SAC skills and become the SAC expert in your business, then please check out my SAC Masterclass on Udemy. At the end of this course, you are able to create highly effective dashboards in SAC. You can find the link with more information in the description. Thank you very much. Coming back to our dashboard, let's add another chart. This time I select a tree map. A tree map needs a measure for the size and a dimension for the label. And this time I add a further measure for the color. Let's take profit and change the colors from blue to red. I do not like the legend, so I click on these three points again, go to show slash height and deselect the legend. Let's add a third chart. This time I copy the first one, click on it, press Ctrl plus C on your keyboard to copy it and Ctrl plus V to paste it. This time I want to have a time series. We again need a measure and a time dimension, such as the order date. As default, the time series is on a daily level. 
If we want to change it on a higher level, we have to go to the context menu, drill and select the desired level. As a last chart, I want to insert a table. To do this, you have to click on this little table symbol right next to the chart symbol in the menu bar. Tables are organized in rows and columns. So let's first select a dimension for the rows, for example the customer ID. To select a measure for the columns, we have to click on this little filter or funnel symbol and select or deselect the measures. I am a big fan of nice tables in dashboards since they offer a high density of information, but only if they are designed as visual tables. So I right click on the column headers and select Insert Chart. That looks nice and now it seems that our first little dashboard is ready to be viewed. Let's save this story and after that we go to the view mode in the upper right corner. If I click on one of the markets and filter it, unfortunately nothing happens. That's not what we expect from a real dashboard, so we go back to the edit mode Click on the three points of the chart and select Linked Analysis. If we want to connect all charts to interactively filter the dashboard, I select all widgets on this page. Widgets is just another term for charts and tables. And I select Filter on Data Point Selection. I have to repeat this with all four charts. For the sake of simplicity, I do this only for the bar chart and the tree map. Let's go back to the view mode and see what happens. If I now filter on one market, the whole dashboard will be filtered. The same happens if I click on the tree map. Now I can analyze the things I am interested in. Let's see which customer made the highest sales. Fine. To delete the filters, go to Applied to Chart and remove both filters. Now you are ready to build your first dashboards. Please take a minute and check out my comprehensive 6-hour course on Udemy. I wish you all the best with your dashboards and thanks for watching this video.